The Meiji Restoration, Ming Ji Wai Shin Meiji Yishin, also known as the Meiji Renovation, Revolution, Reform, or Renewal, was an event that restored practical imperial rule to the Empire of Japan in 1868 under Emperor Meiji, following nearly 700 years of almost continuous military dictatorship, headed by a series of shoguns appointed by hereditary, but little more than ceremonial, emperors. Although there had been periods with ruling emperors before the Meiji Restoration, the events restored practical abilities and consolidated the political system under the Emperor of Japan. Too, the goals of the restored government were expressed by the new emperor in the Charter Oath. The restoration led to enormous changes in Japan's political and social structure and spanned both the late Edo period, often called the Bakumatsu, and the beginning of the Meiji period. Topic: <laughs> Foreign influence. The Japanese knew that they were behind the Western world when American Commodore Matthew C. Perry came to Japan in 1853 in large warships with armament and technology that far outclassed those of Japan with the intent to conclude a treaty that would open up Japanese ports to trade. Figures like Shimazu Nariakira concluded that, If we take the initiative, we can dominate, if we do not, we will be dominated. Leading Japan to, Throw open its doors to foreign technology. Observing Japan's response to the Western powers, Chinese General Li Hongzheng considered Japan to be China's principal security threat. As early as 1863, five years before the Meiji Restoration, the leaders of the Meiji Restoration, as this revolution came to be known, acted in the name of restoring imperial rule to strengthen Japan against the threat represented by the colonial powers of the day, bringing to an end the era known as Sokoku, the foreign relations policy, lasting about 250 years, prescribing the death penalty for foreigners entering or Japanese nationals leaving the country. The word Meiji means enlightened rule and the goal was to combine modern advances with traditional eastern values. The main leaders of this were Ito Hirobumi, Matsukata Masayoshi, Kido Takayoshi, Itaaki Taisuki, Yamagata Aritomo, Mori Arinori, Okubo Tashimichi, and Yamaguchi Naoyoshi. Topic. Imperial Restoration The foundation of the Meiji Restoration was the 1866 Satsuma Choshu alliance between Saigo Takamori and Kido Takayoshi, leaders of the reformist elements in the Satsuma domain and Choshu domain. These two leaders supported the Emperor Komei Emperor Meiji's father and were brought together by Sakamoto Ryoma for the purpose of challenging the ruling Tokugawa Sogonate Bakufu and restoring the emperor to power. After Emperor Komei's death on January 30, 1867, Emperor Meiji ascended the throne on February 3. This period also saw Japan change from being a feudal society to having a market economy and left the Japanese with a lingering influence of modernity. <laughs> End of the Sogonate The Tokugawa government had been founded in the 17th century and initially focused on re-establishing order in social, political and international affairs after a century of warfare. The political structure, established by Ieyasu and solidified under his two immediate successors, his son Hide Tada who ruled from 1616 to 23 and grandson Iyamitsu 1623 to 51, bound all daimyos to the Sogonate and limited any individual daimyo from acquiring too much land or power. The Tokugawa Sogonate came to its official end on November 9, 1867, when Tokugawa Yoshinobu, the 15th Tokugawa Shogun, put his prerogatives at the emperor's disposal, and resigned ten days later. This was effectively the restoration Taisei Hoken of imperial rule, although Yoshinobu still had significant influence and it was not until January 3, the following year, with the young emperor's edict, that the restoration fully occurred. Shortly thereafter in January 1868, the Boshin War, War of the Year of the Dragon started with the Battle of Toba Fushimi in which Choshu and Satsuma's forces defeated the ex-shogun's army. This forced or allowed the emperor to strip Yoshinobu of all power, setting the stage for official restoration. On January 3, 1868, the emperor made a formal declaration of the restoration of his power. The emperor of Japan announces to the sovereigns of all foreign countries and to their subjects that permission has been granted to the shogun Tokugawa Yoshinobu to return the governing power in accordance with his own request. 
We shall henceforward exercise supreme authority in all the internal and external affairs of the country. Consequently, the title of emperor must be substituted for that of Tycon, in which the treaties have been made. Officers are being appointed by us to the conduct of foreign affairs. It is desirable that the representatives of the treaty powers recognize this announcement. All Tokugawa lands were seized and placed under imperial control, thus placing them under the prerogative of the new Meiji government. With Fonk and Sanchizai, the areas were split into three types, urban prefectures, Fu-Fu, rural prefectures, Xi'an-Ken and the already existing domains. In 1869, the daimyos of the Tosa, Heizen, Satsuma and Choshu domains, who were pushing most fiercely against the Sogonate, were persuaded to return their domains to the emperor. Other daimyo were subsequently persuaded to do so, thus creating, arguably for the first time, a central government in Japan which exercised direct power through the entire realm. Tian Sha some Sogonate forces escaped to Hokkaido, where they attempted to set up a breakaway Republic of Ezo, however, forces loyal to the Emperor ended this attempt in May 1869 with the Battle of Hakodate in Hokkaido. The defeat of the armies of the former Shogun led by Inomoto Takeaki and Hijikata Toshizo marked the final end of the Tokugawa Sogonate, with the Emperor's power fully restored. Finally, by 1872, the daimyos, past and present, were summoned before the Emperor, where it was declared that all domains were now to be returned to the Emperor. The roughly 280 domains were turned into 72 prefectures, each under the control of a state appointed governor. If the daimyos peacefully complied, they were given a prominent voice in the new Meiji government. Later, their debts and payments of samurai stipends were either taxed heavily or turned into bonds which resulted in a large loss of wealth among former samurai. <laughs> <laughs> Military reform The Meiji emperor announced in his 1868 charter oath that Knowledge shall be sought all over the world, and thereby the foundations of imperial rule shall be strengthened." Under the leadership of Mori Arinori, a group of prominent Japanese intellectuals went on to form the Meiji Six Society in 1873 to continue to "...promote civilization and enlightenment," through modern ethics and ideas. However, during the Restoration, political power simply moved from the Tokugawa Sogonate to an oligarchy consisting of these leaders, mostly from Satsuma Province Okubo Tashimichi and Saigo Takamori, and Choshu Province Ito Hirobumi, Yamagata Aritomo, and Kido Takayoshi. This reflected their belief in the more traditional practice of imperial rule, whereby the Emperor of Japan serves solely as the spiritual authority of the nation and his ministers govern the nation in his name. The Meiji oligarchy that formed the government under the rule of the emperor first introduced measures to consolidate their power against the remnants of the Edo period government, the Sogonate, daimyos, and the samurai class. The oligarchs also endeavored to abolish the four divisions of society. Throughout Japan at the time, the samurai numbered 1.9 million, for comparison, this was more than ten times the size of the French privileged class before the 1789 French Revolution. Moreover, the samurai in Japan were not merely the lords, but also their higher retainers people who actually worked, with each samurai being paid fixed stipends. Their upkeep presented a tremendous financial burden, which may have prompted the oligarchs to action. Whatever their true intentions, the oligarchs embarked on another slow and deliberate process to abolish the samurai class. First, in 1873, it was announced that the samurai stipends were to be taxed on a rolling basis. Later, in 1874, the samurai were given the option to convert their stipends into government bonds. Finally, in 1876, this commutation was made compulsory. To reform the military, the government instituted nationwide conscription in 1873, mandating that every male would serve for four years in the armed forces upon turning 21 years old, followed by three more years in the reserves. One of the primary differences between the samurai and peasant classes was the right to bear arms, this ancient privilege was suddenly extended to every male in the nation. Furthermore, samurai were no longer allowed to walk about town bearing a sword or weapon to show their status. This led to a series of riots from disgruntled samurai. One of the major riots was the one led by Saigo Takamori, the Satsuma Rebellion, which eventually turned into a civil war. This rebellion was, however, put down swiftly by the newly formed Imperial Japanese Army, trained in Western tactics and weapons, even though the core of the new army was the Tokyo Police Force, which was largely composed of former samurai. 
This sent a strong message to the dissenting samurai that their time was indeed over. There were fewer subsequent samurai uprisings and the distinction became all but a name as the samurai joined the new society. The ideal of samurai military spirit lived on in romanticized form and was often used as propaganda during the early 20th century wars of the Empire of Japan, however, it is equally true that the majority of samurai were content despite having their status abolished. Many found employment in the government bureaucracy, which resembled an elite class in its own right. The samurai, being better educated than most of the population, became teachers, gun makers, government officials, and or military officers. While the formal title of samurai was abolished, the elitist spirit that characterized the samurai class lived on. The oligarchs also embarked on a series of land reforms. In particular, they legitimized the tenancy system which had been going on during the Tokugawa period. Despite the Bakufu's best efforts to freeze the four classes of society in place, during their rule villagers had begun to lease land out to other farmers, becoming rich in the process. This greatly disrupted the clearly defined class system which the Bakufu had envisaged, partly leading to their eventual downfall. The military of Japan, being strengthened by nationwide conscription and the infusion of a samurai military spirit, became emboldened to see themselves as a growing world power after winning both the Sino Japanese War and the Russo Japanese War. <laughs> Centralization Besides drastic changes to the social structure of Japan, in an attempt to create a strong centralized state defining its national identity, the government established a dominant national dialect, called standard language that replaced local and regional dialects and was based on the patterns of Tokyo's samurai classes. This dialect eventually became the norm in the realms of education, media, government, and business. The Meiji Restoration, and the resultant modernization of Japan, also influenced Japanese self identity with respect to its Asian neighbors, as Japan became the first Asian state to modernize based on the Western model, replacing the traditional Confucian hierarchical order that had persisted previously under a dominant China with one based on modernity. Industrial growth The Meiji Restoration accelerated industrialization in Japan, which led to its rise as a military power by the year 1895, under the slogan of, Enrich the country, strengthen the military. Fu Guo Chang Bing Fukoku Kyohei. Japan's economic powers are a major influence on the industrial factor of its country also. Economics and market are both influenced how the people use the market as a place of growth. The nation of Japan had gone under a mass transformation that helped them economically. Japan had help from Western nations when it came to the industrial growth. This is important to the growth and ideas that came with the reforms and transformation Japan was undergoing during the Meiji period. During the Meiji period powers such as Europe and the United States helped transform Japan and made them realize a change needed to take place. Some leaders went out to foreign lands and used the knowledge and government writings to help shape and form a more influential government within their walls that allowed for things such as production. Despite the help Japan received from other powers, one of the key factors in Japan's industrializing success was its relative lack of resources, which made it unattractive to Western imperialism. The farmer and the samurai classification were the base and soon the problem of why there was a limit of growth within the nation's industrial work. The government sent officials such as the samurai to monitor the work that was being done. Because of Japan's leaders taking control and adapting Western techniques it has remained one of the world's largest industrial nations. The rapid industrialization and modernization of Japan both allowed and required a massive increase in production and infrastructure. Japan built industries such as shipyards, iron smelters, and spinning mills, which were then sold to well-connected entrepreneurs. Consequently, domestic companies became consumers of Western technology and applied it to produce items that would be sold cheaply in the international market. With this, industrial zones grew enormously, and there was a massive migration to industrializing centers from the countryside. Industrialization additionally went hand-in-hand -hand with the development of a national railway system and modern communications. With industrialization came the demand for coal. There was dramatic rise in production, as shown in the table below. Coal was needed for steamships and railroads. The growth of these sectors is shown below. 
Topic. See also. Bakumatsu. Datsu A Ron. Land tax reform, Japan 1873. Modernization of Japanese military 1868 to 1931. Meiji Constitution. Four Hitokiri of the Bakumatsu. Guangmu reform, the similar process in neighboring Korea. Topic. Notes. One. Carrot Although the political system was consolidated under the Emperor of Japan, power was mainly transferred to a group of people, known as the Meiji Oligarchy and Genro, who helped in the restoration of imperial power. Topic references Topic Further reading Akamatsu, Paul 1972. Meiji 1868, Revolution and Counter-Revolution in Japan. New York, Harper and Row. P. 1247. Beasley, William G. 1972. The Meiji Restoration. Stanford, Stanford University Press. Beasley, William G. 1995. The Rise of Modern Japan, Political, Economic and Social Change Since 1850. New York, St. Martin's Press. Craig, Albert M. 1961. Choshu in the Meiji Restoration. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. Janssen, Marius B., Gilbert Rosman, eds. 1986. Japan in Transition, From Tokugawa to Meiji. Princeton, Princeton University Press, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link, Janssen, Marius B. 2000. The Making of Modern Japan. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. Murphy, Rhodes 1997. East Asia, A New History. New York, Addison Wesley Longman. Sato, Ernest Mason. A Diplomat in Japan. ISBN 4-925080-28-8. Wall, Rachel F. 1971. Japan's Century, An Interpretation of Japanese History Since the 1850s. London, The Historical Association. Breen, John, The Imperial Oath of April 1868, Ritual, Power and Politics in Restoration Japan, Monumenta Nipponica, 51, 4, 1996, Francisco Barbarin and Rafael Domingo Ossel, Cadigo Civil Japones. Estudio Preliminar, Traducion y Notas, 2 ed. Thompson's Aranzadi, 2006. Harry D. Harutunian, Toward Restoration, Berkeley, University of California Press, 1970, Introduction, pp. 1-46, on Yoshida, Chapter 4, The Culture of Action, Yoshida Shoen, pp. 184-219. Nahida Tetsuo, The Intellectual Foundations of Modern Japanese Politics, Chicago and London, University of Chicago Press, Chapter 3, Restorationism in Late Tokugawa, pp. 43-68. H. Van Stralen, Yoshida Shoen, Forerunner of the Meiji Restoration, A Biographical Study Leiden, E. J. Brill, 1952, David M. Earl, Emperor and Nation in Japan Seattle, University of Washington Press, 1972, on Yoshida, Attitude Toward the Emperor, Nation, pp. 161-192. Also pp. 82-105. Marius B. Jansen, Sakamoto Ryoma and the Meiji Restoration New York, Columbia University Press, 1994 especially Chapter 8, Restoration, pp. 312-346. W. G. Beasley, The Meiji Restoration Stanford, California, Stanford University Press, 1972, especially Chapter 6, Dissenting Samurai, pp. 140-171. Conrad Totman, From Reformism to Transformism, Bakufu Policy 1853-1868, in, T. Nahida and V. J. Koshman, Conflict in Modern Japanese History, New Jersey, Princeton University Press, 1988, pp. 62-80. Jansen, Marius B., The Meiji Restoration, in, Jansen, Marius B., ed., The Cambridge History of Japan, Vol. 5, The Nineteenth Century, New York, Cambridge Up, 1989, pp. 308-366. Robert W. Strayer, Ways of the World with Sources Vol. 2, 2nd ed. pp. 950, 2013. Topic. External links. Essay on the Meiji Restoration Era, 1868-1889 on the About Japan, A Teacher's Resource Website 
a rare collection of Japanese photographs of the Meiji Restoration from famous 19th-century Japanese and European photographers. <laughs> 